All right, it is another day in Chicago and I have a, another truck that I am driving. And this time it's a Chevy Colorado, but it's a jacked up ZR2 model. So what I'm going to do in this video is, well, <laughs> see how it fits into my city life. So I'm Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. And uh, yeah, let's go hit an ATM, a drive through a small Chicago parking lot and see what happens. Oh yeah, first up, we're gonna park in my garage. So let's take a closer look right now. Now the one thing I will say before I try and back into my garage is these cameras right here are going to be totally key to <laughs> a successful backup because they give you a really good idea for your fine tuning. Now I'm using my side mirrors for placement and obviously I'm looking out to um, judge the obstacle course that are the trash cans in Chicago alleys, uh, but this right here will help me fine tune and make sure that I don't hit the back of my garage. And I will say also that I'm really a fan of these dynamic lines because it gives you a good idea of where you're curving and if there's anything in your zone that you might hit. Um, also, I don't know if you have placement of sound, but you can see right here, there's like a little exclamation point. It's telling me to be aware of what's going on right there. And um, the sound was in my uh, back left quadrant. Made it by hair. The audibles are also helpful. And obviously while I'm doing all of this, I have to keep in mind that I have a neighbor and I don't want to hit their vehicle and I want to give them enough space to get in and out of their vehicle. So usually once I pull past this threshold, I just kind of try and bring my nose in a little bit to hug the wall as much as I can. And there you go. I am parked in my garage. It wasn't that hard. Well, it wasn't that hard. It's a mid-sized truck. It wasn't that hard. It looks like it fit. Let's see how we really did. As you can see, one of the challenges that I have to deal with is, yeah, I have to share the garage with my neighbor. But um, I'm going to say that this is uh, in far enough that I can close the garage. And... Uh, Let's come over here. Um, so this is always the real challenge with my new garage is the fact that this door right here has to be able to open with the tail end of the truck backing up. And uh, let's see. Ooh. It's close, but it makes it. So let's verify that the garage door will shut. space. Plenty of space. I'm going to consider that a win for this mid-sized truck. Since we parked successfully on my garage, let's let's see how we do with parallel parking. Let's so, see if we can find um, a parking space in my neighborhood somewhere. Oh, you know what? I see a spot right here. This is definitely going to be big enough for me. So let's see how this does. I have to tell you the truck bed always throws me when I'm parallel parking. See, plenty, plenty of space, plenty of space. Um, this is really helpful with the around view camera and the angles. I'm sure I'm doing a very bad job of this because this is the first time I'm trying to parallel park this. A little bit close there, so we'll scooch it forward. But I'll tell you, like looking out the window, that just looks really close. And I feel like I'm going to tag that car, but the camera says no, so I'm going to trust that. Oh, 
Okay, so this is not the most graceful parking I have done. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit that. This is uh, far and away one of the worst parallel parking spots I've ever uh, gone into. Um, but again, plenty of space. The camera was helpful, especially when I couldn't see over the hood to see how close I was to that Subaru in front of me. But as you can see, I've got plenty of space in front, plenty of space behind. From the outside of the vehicle, again, you can see I had plenty of space in the front, plenty of space in the back, and uh, yeah, this space was plenty big, and I just completely botched the parking job. No judgment. <laughs> I would get better the next time I did it, I swear. All right, in today's um, edition of City Driving with Jill and the Colorado ZR2, we are um, driving through the city, heading to the gym. So we are dealing with a street that has a bike lane. You can see that on the right. And um, actually, I should say we're dealing with streets that have a bike lane, and you will see them on the right. And then we will hit a narrow um, Chicago parking lot at Orange Theory. I will also go through an ATM. I need to start picking up some cash for Rebel Rally. Um, and yeah, that, that's what we've got on our agenda for today. I will say that um, the vehicle is wide and so with the bike lane on the right and especially as we come up onto some of the protected bike lanes, um, I get a little bit nervous and I definitely scoot more towards the center line so that I give the biker and those protected lanes as much space as possible. But it's, it's one of those things like I feel very large, <laughs> very large in the city. And I also feel pretty large when I am um, driving down the more narrow streets in Chicago. Now, one thing I will say um, for the Colorado as we are going down the street with a speed bump is I don't feel like I really need to slow down for the speed bump and that gets a thumbs up for me. I'm always really irked in Chicago when they tell you the speed limit on a road is 25 miles an hour and then they put a speed bump on the road that makes you slow down to like five miles per hour. That to me is a known sequitur and if you wanted me to go five miles an hour, you should make the speed limit five miles an hour not 25 so I can go over the speed bumps at speed in this and I actually kind of like that I've been giggling over it all week all right now we are entering the parking lot for orange theory um, let's see what we've got going on up here Ooh, I see a nice spot here that I can back into and I love that especially in a pickup truck so I'm just going to take this spot right here and just kind of do a little maneuver to back up into that space. And it's kind of a narrow space, but feeling pretty good about it. This does have a reverse camera as well as an around view camera. So it really helps you fine tune. I mean, obviously you're going to use your mirrors to line it up, but then fine tuning. I think the around view camera also gets a thumbs up. Cool, I like parking in the front row. All right, the next task I have for today is to exit the Orange Theory parking lot and circle back around through the Chase parking lot and the ATM. Now, I really like this ATM because it's very narrow and I feel like it really showcases um, a vehicle that is on the bigger side of things um, and how well it fits in tight spaces. Now, one of the reasons I need to go to the ATM is pull some cash out for Rebel. And this is kind of a little bit, a little known fact, but during the Rebel, you need cash for bribes. <laughs> so um, if you um, 
let's let's go to the more difficult one, shall we? I'll go into this angled one here instead of pulling straight forward. So, um, if you need to get to your car, if you like after hours, ooh, this is not gonna work. Um, if you need to get to your car after hours, if you need to, um, let's see if I can swing a little bit wider. Um, if you need to use some mechanical help, if you need to, um, you know, I, I don't know, make a call from home or something like that. Ooh, that last, the back tire is going to go over the curb. Um, then you actually, oh, and I hit the wrong one as it was. Um, all right, back and back out then. Um, if you need to uh, make a call, all of that has to be done with cash. So um, it's kind of interesting. So you need to, to be loaded down with a little bit of cash um, just in case you need to bribe somebody. All right, I pulled into the wrong space. I was trying to be um, like show how narrow things were, pulled into the wrong space. So you know what? I showed how narrow it was. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go to the, the, the easy one in theory. Although I have to do a really lovely 20 point turn here. So, cash for the rebel. That's, that's what I'm doing right now. All right, tight space, maneuvered fairly well, but. Now I will say one of the benefits of being in a mid-sized truck is I don't feel like I'm super high and the um, actual slot to put your card in, I don't have to reach over too much. All right, to add spice to the ATM area, um, as you can see this Brinks security uh, van has kind of pulled in front of my space and is blocking how I would turn out of this. So um, let's, thankfully nobody's in the parking space, like kind of in front of me. So I think maybe I can just pull up and around and make a wide turn into this space a little bit. Eh, all right, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Um, but I have to tell you, a lot of people have been challenging me this week by parking where they shouldn't park or, um, you know, pulling up into to areas or not pulling in all the way and I have to maneuver around them. And while this is a big vehicle, you've got some around view cameras and things like that that just really help you be able to navigate the space. So we've uh, navigated a tight parking lot and we've um, successfully not hit any bikers. Um, in the bike lane, although I'm blocking the bike lane now, trying to get out of um, the parking area. And um, so I haven't hit any bikers uh, and we navigated an ATM. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider that um, successful for today. All right, I am now going in search of a Starbucks with a drive-thru. I feel like I'm getting close. Haha. -ha. I see it off to the left. So the question is going to be how to get to the drive-thru. I don't feel conspicuous at all in a big chartreuse pickup truck in this parking lot. Not even a little bit. All right, so we are coming up on the drive-thru. We see there's an eight foot, six inch clearance. I'm not gonna have a problem with that. Um, it's a little bit of a tight turn, but I got it, kind of, yep, that was tight, back uh, rear tire kind of caught a little bit, hello, hi, can I do a tall pumpkin spice latte with coconut milk and no whipped cream, hot or cold, hot please, Anything else? No, thank you. Thank you. It is PSL season after all. All right, so there was a little bit of a tight turn and this is, I don't know if you can see, it's very narrow um, up towards the front. So making that turn 
um, and, and ensuring that my front end didn't hit with my back end was a little bit tight and I did feel my uh, left rear tire uh, hitting the curb as I was rounding that corner. So that was a little bit tight, but in terms of height, obviously not a problem. Um, I did it. We've got another tight turn up ahead, so we'll see how we do there. So I managed to find the camera in the vehicle settings and I don't like that. I want a button for it. And what I'm doing is I'm turning it on so I can get a good gauge of when to start cutting the vehicle and how much play I have. And I will say this did a lot better this time around because of um, the play with um, and, and being able to see where that front corner was hitting. <laughs> but I'm like literally straddling the corner of, of this turn. Camera's helpful. I wish there was a hard button for that. All right, so I didn't feel too high at the uh, window and it was easy to grab my drink and I didn't feel, you know, I felt like I was on level with the window. So um, yeah, I felt pretty good about that. Um, the turns were a little bit tough, but I made it. It's a mid-sized truck. It was fine. I think it wouldn't have been as fine if I had a full-size truck. I'll be honest with you. That would be very curious. I might be doing the whole abort, 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 and uh, going inside. All right, now that we have, I think, successfully conquered some city spaces, I want to talk a little bit about um, some driving impressions before I get into some things that I like and things that I don't like. And the first thing that I want to say about driving the Chevy Colorado ZR2 is <laughs> it's really hard to get in and out of this vehicle because there are no running boards. And, um, you know, I mean, it is what it is. There are no running boards. They have rock rails on the exterior and I get it. Um, this is an off-road vehicle. Uh, but as a five foot tall female, this was, this was a challenge. I would say that's probably the most challenging part of driving the ZR2, not even just in the city, just driving it is getting in and out. If you have mobility issues, if you aren't very tall, this, this is not the vehicle for you. This, it's just not. Um, I've enjoyed driving over speed bumps because I can do it at speed. Um, but I will tell you that, um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, so th this is a mixed bag. It does really well in city spaces because, again, speed bumps don't even need to slow down. Potholes, who cares? Um, but as soon as you um, get into, like, the narrow one-way streets in Chicago, that is a bit of a challenge. And, you know, I found myself... Um, pulling over so somebody could pass me and you just couldn't do, you know, there wasn't a two-way exchange of um, vehicles on a narrow street. So that was a little bit of a problem um, and made me a little bit uncomfortable. I'm also going to say the turning radius on this is not great. So, uh, you know, when I was maneuvering into my garage, I had to hit it just right or I was like, meep, 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 meep. And as you saw with the parallel parking, I just, I couldn't quite get the angle um, that I wanted. So um, getting into the vehicle is a challenge. I wore a dress one day in high heels and that was a complete disaster. Um, no video of that. Uh, but as long as I wore tennis shoes and jeans, totally fine. I'm limber enough and um, agile enough that I could climb in and out. But I mean, my husband who's 5'8", 5'9", he, he was just like, oh my God, this is a really tall vehicle. This is hard. Um, and I had a friend who's like 5'11", get into the vehicle and she was just like, this, this isn't easy. So, um, getting in and out, even, even, you know, for somebody taller than me, it's, it's going to be a little bit rough, but, um, driving, I, you know, you do hear some tire noise coming into the cabin, but it's comfortable. Um, it's comfortable on the highway. It's comfortable over the, the speed bumps. It's comfortable over potholes. Um, I have to watch the width on city streets to make sure that I'm not mm, invading the bike lane too much. But, um, like I said, a mixed bag. It's hard to get in and out of it. It's um, easy to see around it. The around view cameras are great. A super, a super help when parking or maneuvering tight spaces. And, um, you know, it's generally comfortable. These seats, 
aren't awful. I will say I didn't drive to Indianapolis this week, so I can't tell you if three hours would be too much, but for an hour, it's not that bad. Um, so if I had to summarize this in a sentence, I've already rambled on way too long. Um, Tim has probably already edited out half of my ramblings. Uh, but if I had to summarize this in a sentence, I would say this is definitely a competent, capable off-roader that can, can exist in the city. However, it's not going to be your most comfortable or easy to maneuver vehicle. I would go for a regular mid-sized Colorado if I wanted this to be my daily driver. Unless, of course, I wanted to make a statement without saying a word because this chartreuse color uh, definitely makes a statement. All right, that is what I have for you on driving impressions. Now, before I close this out, let's dig into some of the things that I like and some of the things I didn't like. All right, now it is time to get into the things that I like and the things that I don't like. And I'm just gonna start with the like list. And that is going to be the fact that I really like my driving position. I think that Chevrolet has done a great job here. I don't feel like my knee is too close to, you know, the underbelly of the dash or the steering column. So I feel like I have enough room there. And I don't feel like I'm eating the steering wheel. I have a solid, whew, maybe 15 inches between my breastbone and the airbag, you know, where the airbag would deploy. And um, NHTSA says you really only need about 10. So this to me is an ideal driving position. I was able to push the steering wheel far enough away while still getting close enough to the pedals. And um, you know, the seats are mostly comfortable. I will say that this tilts forward a little bit much and um, that can be annoying, especially if I'm wearing a ponytail. But overall, the driving position, the seating comfort gets a huge thumbs up from me. I also really like the size of this screen. The screen uh, for the infotainment system is not too big. It is just the right size. And I know a lot of people don't like the tablet style screens that pop up out of the dash. And I think this is blended really well into the dash. It flows from the gauge cluster behind the wheel and then just kind of comes out from there. And I think that Chevrolet has done a really good job with that. I like the heated and the cooled seats. I like the dual automatic climate control and I am definitely appreciative of the fact that you can turn the auto stop start off. Um, of course, I wish that it was default off, but it's default on and you have to hit the button every time. And finally, I would be lying if I said that I didn't like the design of the Colorado ZR2. I even kind of like the chartreuse green color, even though it's obnoxious. Um, I like the flow tie. I like the red accents. I like the green accents on the dash on the interior. And I just overall like the look of this truck. If you want a statement piece, this is definitely it. Um, maybe not so much an everyday driver, but definitely statement piece. All right, now it's time to flip it over to the do not like side of the spectrum. And I'll be honest with you, you got to take this vehicle with a grain of salt, but I will point out the step in height is just a little bit egregious. Okay, I'm five feet tall. It's going to be tough for somebody like me, but it's also gonna to be tough for taller people too um, because you have rock rails instead of an actual running board. Yeah, I just can't see doing this every day and I definitely can't see doing it in a skirt and high heels every day. Outside of the step in tight, I'll be honest with you, there are really only a couple things that I don't like about this. And yep, I'm going to point to the wireless charger, but it's not for the reason that you think. It did not overheat my phone, but what it also didn't do is it didn't charge my phone. This is a very fickle plate and I could not find the right position to put my phone in in order to be able to get it to charge. So I'd put it on the plate, it wouldn't charge. I'd move it this way, it wouldn't charge. I'd move it that way, it wouldn't charge. I'd move it back to the original location, it would start charging, and then it would stop. So, um, yeah. Didn't overheat my phone, but it didn't charge it either, and I don't like that. Uh, another thing that I don't like is going to be these cup holders. Now, they've done a lot of right things here, so you take this out, and you can see they've got little bubbles there to hold in your cup but yeah this is my tall pumpkin spice latte and it's like bobbling around so i didn't get a green stopper for this and what i found was when i was driving i kind of 
was holding onto this so that it wouldn't spill, especially while it was hot and full. Now this is a tall, like I think this is more like a medium sized tea and it holds that in there pretty well. But like if you're getting a tall coffee, doesn't work very well. I don't know, maybe maybe the manly drink is not a tall drink. Um, maybe, maybe everybody's gonna be doing a, a venti. I don't know, maybe I would hold that in there better. Certainly hold in your um, larger sport bottle drinks, but something on the smaller side, fail. Now, something else that I haven't decided if I like or I don't like yet, but I know this is a very controversial feature, so I'm going to bring it up, and that is going to be the fact that your lights are going to be in your um, control unit here, in your, in your screen, rather than a hard, you know, control someplace, you have to access your lights through the infotainment screen. Now, I will point out, I did go through page, page, page to get there, but there is also a little button right here that you can hit that pops up a quick menu of auto on, off, that kind of thing. So it's not as difficult to get to as you might think, but I'm undecided how I feel about the lights in the screen. I'll be honest, I've got them on auto. I haven't touched them. All right, that is what I have for you today on this Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 in the city. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check us out on the web at pickuptrucktalk.com where we have first drive reviews of this vehicle. And uh, yeah, I will see you down the road.